Today we're going to be talking about blanching and shocking vegetables, particularly asparagus. Blanching and shocking is the process in which we stop the cooking process so we can keep that bright color and vitality of the vegetable, either be steamed or boiled. You par cook it or steam it and then dump it into an ice bath. Guys, today our lesson we're going to learn how to shock and blanch vegetables, in particular asparagus, so you can learn how to keep that color and that vitality to make them yummy, crunchy, and not dread and brown and yucky. So this is your typical bunch of asparagus. Usually comes with a rubber band on it. We're going to take it apart, wash it, and then cut it. Then you separate them to check for imperfections, see if any of them are rotten and then we will bend them at the end and this will show where it breaks instead of using a knife to cut through it and having too much waste. When you bend it and it breaks and gives, that's the appropriate part where that woodiness be discarded. Now please don't throw out these ends. In restaurants we would peel them, use them for asparagus cream soup, stock, stir fries, many other applications. Please don't throw anything away, there's never any waste. Now that we have all the asparagus ends off, I'm gonna line them up and just give them a trim so they're nice and even, so you don't have any of those jagged edges when you wanna present it or serve it on a dish. Another method that is widely used in restaurants is to peel the ends, especially if they're very large and woody. It gives for a very nice presentation, and you'll see it used in a lot of brunch dishes as well as steak entrees. Now that our asparagus is prepped and ready to go, we're going to put a pot of water up to boil, put in a good two, three pinches of salt. The salt will help bring out that vibrant green color when we throw the asparagus in. Make sure the salt is nice and dissolved, and at the same time, create your ice bath. Take a large bowl, half ice, half water, mix it around a little bit. This is gonna be our ice bath that we're going to shock the asparagus in once it's cooked properly in the boiling water. Make sure you put that salt in because it'll bring that color out. Well, let's get our mise en place ready. We're gonna need some lemon, some garlic, salt, pepper, olive oil, extra virgin preferably. We're going to smash the garlic like we've done before. Show you how to zest the lemon and use the lemon juice. The lemon really brings out the flavor of the asparagus and pairs well, especially the zest. Make sure that you roll the lemon just like with any citrus, roll it out on your cutting board or your table to release all that juice, you know, break down those cell walls. Do that after you zest it, not zest it after you cut it because it's gonna be really difficult. So now we have our mise all set and ready to go. We have our black pepper, our salt, extra virgin olive oil, our lemon halves, and we're ready to go. At this point, we should have a really nice rolling boil. And what I mean by rolling boil, is you want to see a lot of movement in the water. The bubbles are coming up, they're robust, and they're really causing a lot of commotion and steam. So you get a nice rolling boil. It's good for anything you boil, especially pasta, vegetables, it has to be that hot. Now we have our really nice raging boil. Asparagus goes in. Using my spider, I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit. We're not gonna cook it too long, maybe about five minutes because at that point, if you start cooking it too long, it's gonna to start to get brown and drab, and we wanna retain that bright green color and all that vitality. After five minutes, if you have those kitchen fingers, test them to see if they bend a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want them to be able to tie a knot. And then we're throwing them into the ice bath, little by little. Make sure you drain off all that excess hot water that's why it's important you definitely have a, a lot of ice in there because the heat will start to melt the ice, but this is the shocking process. You're shocking that bright green color into it. Mix it up with your hands, get that ice in there. 
Now this is the key thing now. You want to let it sit for a couple minutes but not too long because you don't want it to get waterlogged. You just want it to get shocked into that bright green color and be able to take it out without it being soaking and wet. This has been sitting in that ice bath for a little while. You're gonna dump it into a colander or sieve, depending on what you have, and you can see how bright the color has remained. Now put it on some paper towel, let it drain out. Like I said, we don't want it wet because we're gonna saute this and incorporate all those flavors of our mise en place. Okay, make sure they're nice and dry. Take a paper towel, roll it up, give it a light squeeze. You don't want to break it apart, but you want to just squeeze it gently to get the excess moisture off. Now let's put a pan of the medium high heat and let's get ready to saute. We're going to add our extra virgin olive oil and we're gonna swirl it in the pan to coat back and forth, getting that evenly distributed. We're gonna throw in our crushed garlic to infuse the oil with that nice flavor. But make sure you don't put your heat too high because you don't want to burn the sugars in the garlic and make it black. Brown is good, but you don't want burnt. So let that infuse for a little bit before you add your asparagus in. Get that bright green asparagus. There it is. Look how beautiful. And then we'll throw it into the pan. We'll start to saute these bad boys. Well, if the pan's at the right temperature, you should hear that nice sizzle, crackle, and pop as you sautéing that beautiful asparagus. Toss it if you can. It's a technique you can practice with a ping pong ball. That's another lesson, but it's very simple once you get it. It's all in the wrist. Make sure to season with salt. Make sure to season with fresh ground pepper. We're gonna finish it up with some of that fresh squeezed lemon juice. I want to keep this simple recipe rather healthy, so I didn't put any butter. You can definitely put a nub of butter in there if you like, salted preferably. When you're done, please remember to discard the lemon and the garlic cloves before you serve it, unless you like to eat it. I mean, I like to eat the garlic cloves, but a lot of people don't like to see that. Take a beautifully sauteed asparagus and arrange it on a nice porcelain plate and we'll garnish with a little bit of our lemon zest. Usually you could just take the microplane and zest right over the dish but this time we're just taking it, sprinkling it up high, make sure to get some height. You get more coverage that way, be it salt, pepper, whatever. Little simple garnish right there, a little lemon on the side. You know, I love putting poached eggs on these things. This is like a classic brunch dish with the poached egg. But I guess that's another lesson, like I always say, but feel free to experiment. Even if you don't know how to do it just yet, you can fry an egg and throw it on top. It works out really well. But that's going to be an upcoming lesson of how to do poached eggs. So we're going to finish it with a little bit of flaky sea salt. This is Maldon sea salt. I like to finish a lot of dishes with this, especially desserts. If you remember when we did the chocolate chunk cookies, I put some of these on top. It really brings out the flavor at the end when you finish. Also add some fresh cracked ground pepper or even some smoked sea salt instead of the flake sea salt and enjoy. So, so inclined, definitely put a nice poached egg on top. And we'll see. And that's another lesson in itself. So that covers our blanching and shocking lesson. Really great vibrant colors. This is the best method to get the brightest color and crisp snap to keep on your vegetables when cooking them for anything. Be it at home or in a restaurant, throw some bacon on that, throw a couple more eggs on that, and then you have dinner. This is actually a real popular brunch dish, done in different ways, maybe pork belly, etc. But you can get creative with this. We'll be working more on different veggies and how to blanch and shock them in the coming weeks and months. Have a great day and thanks for watching.